Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Mike Davies and in this video I'll be showing you how to create custom angled or shape guides inside of GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.22 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here. You can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member. And I have tons of free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. And as I mentioned, you can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member, and I'll include a link to this, as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. All right, let's dive right into this tech so this is sort of a GIMP hack because it's going to take a bit of a workaround to make this work since GIMP does not technically have angled guides. However, we're going to start this off by going to File, New. And I'm just going to go with the 1920 by 1080 document and click OK. So hold control and use my mouse wheel to zoom out. Here's our blank document. As I've shown in various tutorials on this channel, you can create center guides on here by going to Image, Guides, New guide by percent. And you have direction here, so you have vertical and horizontal. I'm gonna create one of each. So here's vertical and image guides, new guide by percent, and I'll go with horizontal. And of course you set the position to 50%, that's gonna give you center guides. So now we have guides at a crosshair here. So now what I wanna do is create custom guides based on these center guides. The way I'm gonna do that is using the path tool. So first I'll grab my path tool over here inside of the toolbox. You can use the shortcut key B. So there we have our path tool selected. And because I wanna rotate this from the center, I'm gonna to wanna to draw my path along this center guide. I'm not gonna lie, it is kinda of difficult to do that in GIMP because the path doesn't really snap to the center guide. But what you can do is monitor the measurements down here as you hover your mouse over this guide and you can place it exactly at the halfway point in terms of the height of your image. So this image is 1080 pixels tall which means I want to place my point at 540 pixels which is the center point. I'm also going to hold control and zoom out with my mouse wheel and the reason I'm doing that is I actually want this path to be a little bit outside the left edge so we have some room. So I'm monitoring that measurement there and you may have to zoom in a bit more on this particular area. So right there, 540, I'll click. So there is our first point which is known as a node. And now I'm gonna hold control, zoom out, move over to here, zoom in. I'll do the same thing. So right there, 540, click. Hold control, zoom out, now we have a path. Once we've created this first path, I'll come over to my paths tab. So you guys will probably be in your layers tab here. I'll come over to the paths tab and here we have our original path. I'm just gonna come over and duplicate this path and I can also rename these paths. So I'm gonna double click on here and rename this one original. Hit the enter key, this one I'll rename 30 degrees. Hit the enter key. I can also unhide both of these using the show hide icon. So I'm gonna make sure my 30 degrees path or the duplicate path here is selected. Then I'll hit shift R on my keyboard or come over here and grab the rotate tool from inside my toolbox. Make sure the transform mode is set to path. So usually it's set to layer by default. Make sure it's set to path and you should see this rotate dialog box here. If not, simply click on your path. So we can't just simply start rotating this because you can see the center axis that this is rotating on is a little bit skewed to the right from the center. So we have to make sure our center X and center Y values are correctly set. In this case, the center X is going to be the halfway point between the width of our image. So in this case, our image is 1920 pixels wide. You can tell that by this dimension up top here. So you divide that by two and that's gonna give you the center X value, which in our case is 960 and hit the enter key. And you'll see there that that has shifted the center point there to the center of our image. You can hold control and zoom in for a better look at that. So once you have the center X and center Y set up correctly, you're going to change the angle here and you can do that either by dragging this slider manually and you'll see that will rotate my path along that center axis, or I can manually change this to 30, hit the enter key. 
that gives you a more precise measurement. So that's saying that this path is going to be 30 degrees from this center point here and then 30 degrees from this one. And of course, basic math tells you that this angle then is going to be 150 degrees. If you wanted it to be the opposite way, you can change this to a minus sign, hit the enter key, and now it's gonna be the opposite. So now this is 30 degrees and this is 150 degrees. I'm gonna keep this set to 30 though, hit the enter key, so get rid of the minus sign and click rotate. So now you'll see we have this diagonal line which we can use as a guide. And the way to use this as a guide is you have to be able to snap your objects to that guide. And you could turn on snapping easily by going to view, snap to active path. So when I click on that, let me come back here. You can see that now has an X in that little box. So now whatever path I'm clicked on, which in this case is the 30 degrees path, any objects I have in here will snap to this. So let me just, for example, draw an ellipse here with the ellipse select tool. So I'll click and drag and release. So you'll see there's a little crosshair in the middle of my ellipse. And when I move it over here to this path, you'll see it will snap to that path and I can move the center of this shape along that. And snapping will also work with things, uh, for example, like the paintbrush tool. So here you can see the center of my brush head snaps to this and that makes it easy to paint along that path. So let me hit Control Shift A to deselect that little ellipse select tool. So let me just show you one more time creating another guide. So let's come back to original and duplicate this. I just like keeping the original guide there. It makes it easier. So this one will rename 60 degrees. Hit the enter key. And once again, Shift R to grab the rotate tool and once again, make sure we correct the center of this. So we'll change the center X to 960, hit the tab key, and then the angle will change to 60, hit the enter key, and now we have a 60 degree guide. So I'll hit rotate. So that's how to create rotated guides based on the horizontal center of the image. You can also do this using the vertical center of the image. That's of course going up and down going left to right is horizontal. And you can also use this technique from the bottom or top of your image. So you don't always have to be on the exact center of the image. So let me show you how to do that. Once again, let's come over here to the original and duplicate that. Let's name this bottom 45 degrees. Hit the enter key. So of course this is still in the exact center because we simply duplicated the original. But what I can do is come over here to my alignment tool so this is gonna be underneath the move tool group and you can see the shortcut key is Q for that. So I'll grab the alignment tool. I'm gonna to align relative to image and I'm gonna come over here and click on this guide. So hold control, zoom out, make sure it's selected. You could tell it's selected because it'll have the little boxes in the corner there, as you can see. Once that's selected, come over here and click the icon align bottom of target. So that will bring that down to the bottom of the image. So now we can perform the same thing, shift R to rotate. And you can see the center of this is off. So come over here and make sure the center is back on. So 960, hit the enter key. And that's actually gonna set the center to this vertical center guide. So when we rotate the guide, it'll rotate from that point. Let me just show you as you can see there. But let's say you wanted to rotate from one of the corners. Let's come back here, change this to zero, hit the enter key. If you wanted to rotate from the left corner, you would set the center X to zero. Hit the enter key, so now you'll see the center points over here. If you wanted to rotate from the right corner, you're gonna type in 100% of the width value, so in this case, 1920. So I'd come over here and type 1920, hit the enter key, and that brings the center of the axis of rotation over here to the right corner. I'm just gonna set this back to zero for the left corner. And then if you were to set a positive value here, this would rotate in the wrong direction. It would rotate downwards. So for example, if I set this to 45, hit the enter key, you'll see that rotated that downwards 45 degrees. So what you have to do in this case is set this to negative 45, hit the enter key, and now we have a 45 degree angle going from the bottom of the image. Let me just point out one thing when it comes to rotating these guides and making them angled guides. Let me reset this and set the center X back to zero, hit the enter key. The reason you can't just come over here and click one of these options. So for example, let's say I wanted to rotate from the left corner, so I'll click this left option, 
is it's going to actually place the center over here on the far left side of the path. And that's not what we want. We want this set right here at the exact corner of the image, at least in this case. And same thing when you come over here and click on the right side. Now it's going to be off the page since this path is longer than the actual document. So in that case, that's way too far to the right. And if I rotate from that point, you'll see what happens there. This can be useful if you do need your rotational axis to be off the page for whatever reason. But in this case, I'm going to set this to 1920 and that way we can rotate from this right corner. So let's actually just reset this to zero and we'll set this value to negative 45 and click rotate. So the last thing I'll show you is how to create guides from shapes. So because you can convert selection areas to paths, you can use those paths in whatever shape you create as a guide. So let me just demonstrate what I'm talking about. Let me come over here, go to the rectangle select tool. Let's say I draw a rectangle select area on here. Inside of my paths dialog, I can come over here and click to convert the selection area to a path. So there is our square shape. I can unhide that. Let's say control shift A to deselect that. So now I have a square path and because I have view snap to active path turned on, if I were to draw another shape like an ellipse and drag this, it would snap to the edges of this. And let's say control shift A to deselect that. This also works with irregular shapes or freehand drawn shapes. So for example, the free select tool, let's say I draw some shape like this hit the enter key and then come over here, convert that selection area to a path. Let's unhide this control shift a. So there we have a path and let me grab once again, this is just what I'm using for demonstration for this tutorial. Uh, it's not going to be quite as effective because it is so irregular, but it does snap to this. So that's just another way to create some crazy guides. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.